Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to address a couple things. So number one, I want to talk about how Optic was able to go from such a poor start, being eliminated in the kickoff classic, losing their first two league matches, to winning a bunch in a row and being the major one champions. And two, along the way, I'm also going to address the overwhelming comment that was in my last power rankings video, where people asked, how in the world could I have had Optic ranked number 10? after the first week of the CDL season. So we're gonna talk about all of that. I'm gonna break it into the first three weeks of the season and the last week, three weeks of the season and go through and explain all of my thoughts. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's bring up this graphic and this graphic talks about weeks one through three. So in these weeks, I'm specifically talking about the kickoff classic and the two online qualifier matches. So their first two matches. That is the point in time when I did my last power rankings video. So with that in the back of our mind, we have to remember where Optic was at at that point in time and where everybody else in the league was also at at that point in time. So Overall, their record was 0-3. So they lost the kickoff classic to Los Angeles Thieves. Now we know after another few weeks and a bunch more matches that LA Thieves looks like one of the best four or five teams in the CDL. They lost to London, who, of course, London is also in that discussion for top three, top four, somewhere in there. And they lost map five, round 11 to the Minnesota Rocker, who is the number one S&D team in the CDL right now. But still, at that point in time, they were 0-3 against teams that they have played in the CDL. When it comes to their each individual game modes, they were 2-4 and four at this point in time in hardpoint. They were 1-4 and four in S&D. And the only thing that was kind of them keeping them where they were at in terms of the matches they were playing was that their control was 2-1. and one. So, Basically, what was happening is they would win the control, they would win one of the other two hard points or the S&D, and that would force a game five, but they weren't clutching up in that map five S&D. So that's where they were at after the first three weeks of the season. And just to put that into comparison, if we look at the other teams here, so first, Seattle, FaZe, LA Thieves, and Toronto, those were the four top teams in the CDL so far. Seattle, of course, because the run that they were able to go on at that kickoff classic. FaZe, because of the matches that they already had, and they were 5-0 and in that first week of online qualifiers. So at that point, they were 2-3-0 or and LA Thieves, because they were able to beat Optic and get a couple more wins. And then Toronto wasn't quite slowing down like we've seen. Toronto was in the grand final in that kickoff classic. So when it comes to those four teams, they have to be above Optic, because at this point in time, Optic was 0-3, and they really haven't shown anything yet. The next two to talk about were the London Royal Ravens and the Minnesota Rocker. Optic lost to both of those squads, so that's another two teams that at that point in time I could not put Optic over. So now we're at Seattle, Phase, LA Thieves, Toronto, London, and Rocker. That's six. So at best, you could have had Optic at top seven. But if we continue on, when it comes to Boston, Boston at that point in time was 2-1, and one, and their only loss was to the Atlanta phase. How could you put an 0-3 Optic team above a 2-1 and one Boston team and their only loss being to Atlanta phase? You can't. So that puts them at 8. Now, the only question marks are, that exist from there is Florida, LAG, and NYSL. When it comes to Florida, they had a win. And to me, I have to give some sort of credit. If you've played three matches and you don't have a single win, I know strength of schedule and all that can play into this as well, but I just don't see how if Florida has a win and LAG has a win, how you put them, how you put Optic above them. Yes, I know that if you were to fast forward all the way through the end of the season, Optic is going to be a better squad. I said that during that video but I could not give them credit because they had not shown it yet so far this year. So I put them be behind Florida and LAG, and the other, other team was NYSL. NYSL at that point in time was also 0-3, but in the kickoff classic, they had a victory over Boston in that first round of the kickoff classic. So for me, when I'm looking at the fact that Optic lost that kickoff classic match and they started 0-2 in league matches, I just don't see how you put them above other squads. And like I said, if you transfer to Major 5 or the end of the year or Champs or whatever, 
I know Optic was going to be the better roster. They were more talented. But at that point in time, I could not force myself to put them in a situation above those teams when they haven't shown it. How could you put them above Boston that had two wins? How could you put them against London or Minnesota that beat them? I just That's where, in my mind, I thought they deserved to be, and that's what I went with. So the first three weeks... This is how they started. Now let's transfer into how they were able to turn things around and why eventually they were able to go on to win that first Optic Major. So first three weeks, let's go to the next three weeks. Weeks four through six, and this is going to be their last three online qualifiers and the Major. Okay, so we're taking all of those and we're putting them in the same basket. Overall, they had a 7-0 and record. So Yes, they were working super hard. Something finally started to click. They started to clutch up. They started to get it in their minds that, okay, we can do this. And then they went 7-0 and and blew everybody out of the water. Their wins in that time span were against Paris, Boston, Toronto, which those are middle of the pack team somewhere in there. A Seattle squad that at the time looked like they were really good and then they started to fall off. And then London, who is a top three squad, and of course, Atlanta twice. Now, I have some key points here for why they were able to turn things around, and it happens to deal with each of their game modes. So in Hardpoint, over the course of those seven matches, they were 8-3. and three. In SND, they were 7-3, and three, and in Control, they were 8-0. and oh. Number one team in Control, that has a lot to do with their success. But let's talk about Hardpoint just specifically. When it comes to Tuscan, they are 4 and 0 or they were 4 and 0 over the course of those last 7 matches on Tuscan and they were winning by a plus 60 point differential and what that means is basically anytime they would play Tuscan they would win on average 250 to 190 so not only were they winning but they were blowing teams out of the water. And then another map that really goes in their favor is Bokage. Because if you're a team like NYSL or another team that plays relatively slow, maybe you could lump Florida in there as well, maybe even Minnesota Rocker, Bokage is a map that you do not want to play. So being 4-1 and one on Bokage is also big because if teams are going to take away Bokage, then you're going to play Tuscan. And if teams are going to take away Tuscan, then you're going to play Bokage. So being really good at two hardpoint maps really goes in your favor. Now, on those Bokage maps, I will say that one loss was to the Atlanta phase, and that was a blowout. If you take all that loss on Bokage to the Atlanta phase when they were 4-0, they had an average point differential of plus 81, and that means they were beating people 250 to 270 or to 170 on average. So again, when they're playing those two maps, it was not close. They were blowing teams out of the water, and hence, they were able to go 8-3 and three in hard point over those last final three weeks of Major 1. When it comes to S&D, they were 7-3 and three overall over the course of those seven matches. And I want to point this out that two of those losses, so 7-3, and three, two of those losses happened against FaZe in the grand final. So if you take that grand final out of the equation, they were actually seven and one all the way up until that best of nine at the end of their own optic major. So for me, S and D was the biggest question in those first three weeks, because when you look at optics roster overall, they have a roster that is constructed of S and D stars. So you're talking about Shotzi, you're talking about Illy, you're talking about Dashi. The way those three were able to make a name for themselves in the CDL is because they were so good at S and D and yeah, Shotzi came over from Halo and had a little bit of a different background, but Illy and Dashi specifically. So for me, that was the biggest question mark is what's going on with Optics S and D? Why aren't they winning those? And in the end, a lot of that might have had to have do with the fact that they were playing in one of those matches, the Minnesota Rocker, who right now is the number one S and D team in the game. And you know, they had other matches against like LA Thieves who are not very good at S&D and London Royal Ravens. That's probably matches that they should win when it comes to S&D. But overall, they were able to put that where it needed to be. They were able to fix their problems in S&D and turn that around. And then last but not least, and what's most dominant here at this current moment for this Optic squad is in control. So in control, they were 8-0. 
And their biggest reason for being 8-0 in control is because of how dominant they've been on defensive rounds. So there's only con there's only two control maps, right? There's Gavutu or there's Tuscan. Well, when they played Gavutu, they're on, so on defense, their overall record on defensive rounds was 15-2. and two. And something I want to point out is that in those defensive rounds, they would finish those rounds with an average of 10 lives left. So not only were they winning those defensive rounds, but they were winning them in, in dominant fashion that would put them ahead when it came to the life differential. And then when it came to Tuscan, they were equally as good with a 6-1 and one record on their defensive rounds with an average of 11 lives left per round. So what this ends up doing to kind of put this all together is that when you're really good at control and you can win those defensive rounds and have an average of 10 lives left, then that's going to force you to be on defense in map five. And if you're really good at defensive rounds, and you get a map five defense, that's going to lead to a control map victory. So at that point in time, if you're either good at hard point or good at S and D, and you can couple that together with a control victory, you're going to be going into map four with a two one advantage. So trying to come back against this optic squad that was eight and three in hard point or seven and three in S and D being able or trying to win map four and map five against them was just way too difficult. And that's why they were able to go on a run, go seven and zero throughout their last seven matches of that first major and eventually end up coming home with the victory. So hopefully I was able to go through and clear up some confusion. I'm sure I'll still get the same questions, but I did my best to explain why exactly I didn't have Optic in the top five or top six because comparison to other teams that were in the CDL, I just didn't think that they deserved to be there yet based on their performance. I knew they would get there. I just didn't want to put them there yet. So if you guys are new around here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Any comments on this, put it down below. I like to interact and try to get back to every single one of you. Leave a like if you don't mind as it really helps out the channel. And with that, thank you guys. We'll see you in the next upload.